So what do you do with the, fir at the first step? So I just want to point out something that's very convenient, and I find it surprising. You know, if there was no periodic orbit theory, I would not have a very uh, concise ways of stating it. And uh, indeed, in literature, especially in quantum chaos literature, they have extremely clumsy way of stating this. So it's, you know, has somebody's name and it's somebody's sum rule, etc. And it's only asymptotically true. But uh, here is what can happen. You might be able to evaluate your zeta function explicitly for specific values of this weighting parameter, either s or z. And here's the simplest example. If you have confined flow, it is chaotic, but you're confined in some region, so you're, you know, doing something complicated, and this is forbidden, escape, no escape. So now we all discussed what escape rate is. It's a likelihood that you leave this uh, region per unit time, and it's related to the leading eigenvalue of your evolution operator. And the zeros of zeta functions are supposed to be related to the eigenvalues, and the leading zero has to be the one that's related to leading angle, which is the escape rate. So if escape rate, gamma, which is you know, minus the leading eigenvalue, if this is zero, then the zeta function uh, should be zero at the escape rate. Now, uh, First of all, this, this is geometrical property of flow, so our observable will set beta equal to zero. We will not be computing any observables at the moment. And the leading eigenvalue means that my answer doesn't depend on TP. And I get this amazing rule that says that what our sigma, which was you know, function of S, the dynamical zeta function at S equals zero, which is the sum over 1 minus all pseudocycles tp. Now, the pseudocycle is extremely simple. It's a sum over minus all pseudocycles and uh, just the weight of the pseudocycle survives. And I'm sorry, there's a minus sign because that's very crucial, minus 1 to the k plus 1, so pseudocycles of all lengths. So this particular sum has to be 0. Now, in your calculations, you always have a finite number of periodic orbits. So if you have a confined system, a flow in which you cannot escape, then you must check how good this sum is, and the way it works is that this sum is dominated by the short periodic orbits because these guys grow exponentially with the period. So the short periodic orbits will make the biggest correction, uh, contribution to this, and if I go to some order in uh, cycle lengths, I will be making an error, and I can numerically estimate the error. So this sum rule has two purposes. Whenever you compute your periodic orbits and their stabilities, and you have a confined system, you must check how good the sum rule is. If the sum rule is very bad, it probably means you lost, you haven't found one of the short periodic orbits. Now, you know, if you lose one term in the sum, for which instability is not very large, you're lost forever. So the first thing is you just have to make sure that what's going on is the meaning of this particular rule is that you have a state space and it's pierced 
by various periodic points. And each periodic point morally owns some neighborhood. And as we know, the size of the neighborhood is roughly 1 over, say this is periodic point in this cycle, the size of neighborhood should be roughly 1 over the period of this thing. And uh, if we miss, so we're trying to densely follow the state space, the ergodic component of it, is the unstable periodic orbit. And if we miss somebody very early on, so we miss this whole region, then it doesn't really help that later on we'll find some periodic orbit that has this neighborhood, etc. So, check this first. Now, this is the crudest form of a sum rule. In actual calculation, you should really use spectral determinants. I'm using the zeta function for pedagogical purposes because it's easier to explain. But all calculations should be done in terms of spectral determinants because those, uh, we have a good control of their convergence and they're much more convergent than zeta functions. Then, you know, there is a long song and story, so if you actually have to compute something, please read the material in the book explaining, in Carol's book explaining how you actually compute. The recommendation is don't use zeta functions in calculations. Compute the Fredholm determinant or spectral determinant 1 minus C of L, which is some sum, 1 minus of some contributions. And the chaos book says how. Read this. But, you know, conceptually it's not very important, so I will not cover it in the lecture. If you just read the material, you'll be fine. But this is amazing. The idea that you have a sum rule like this, this is probability conservation. In deterministic chaos, where there are no probabilities, everything is computable, but the ergodic set is divided in neighborhoods and a finite number of periodic points suffices to get an accurate calculation. This is the first check where we have them. 